Hello, can everybody can uh, hear, hear me? Okay, so uh, let's start. Yeah, that's it. So my name is uh, Enyanik. Uh, I'm working uh, at the French uh, Space Agency at CNES. I'm very glad to present you uh, Offer Toolbox uh, this afternoon. I'm very glad that you come uh, so so many people. Uh, and um, maybe we'll try to make it a, a bit interactive. That's why the title is a question. How will you use Offer Toolbox in the next few years? That means that maybe some of you already use Offer Toolbox. Does have um, people uh, using uh, Using that software? Yeah. And maybe other people uh, don't use yet of a toolbox, so I'm going to present a little bit. Uh, I'm not alone um, because there will be questions. And as you may uh, know, the TV show, uh, Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? When you cannot answer a question, you have a kind of a joker. And I, will, I won't hesitate to use the Ask a Friend joker <laughs> because we have here Rémi Cresson from Istea and also David Ducefi from CNES. Who, uh, who may uh, answer the question uh, with me. Okay, so let's start by presenting uh, a few things you can do with uh, Offer Toolbox. Sometimes we re you receive some uh, remote sensing data, some satellite images, and uh, the rendering is not so good. You don't have a uh, good contrast, you don't uh, have a good rendering, and you would like to uh, make a nice print. You can use one uh, application to make a uh, a local uh, adaptation of uh, his histogram, so you have a good rendering of the of the images. That's an example of what you could do with Offer Toolbox. Or maybe you are interested in uh, uh, mapping uh, objects, and uh, you want uh, to use uh, an application to detect lines, and then you can import lines in your uh, GIS software and uh, try to filter them to find uh, perpendicular lines or whatever. And uh, it could be another use case of Offer Toolbox. Or maybe simply you think that uh, the weather is uh, quite hot in uh, Bucharest. <laughs> you want to go at the mountain, and because 3D is uh, a bit uh, trendy, you make uh, several images of uh, the mountain on a river fur toolbox or river processing chain using offer toolbox. You can build this kind of uh, stereoscopic view of uh, offer toolbox, okay? Uh, of uh, the mountain, sorry. <laughs> so, offer toolbox is. Um, uh, a library of uh, remote sensing applications. There are about 90 applications in the in the library, and uh, the um, applications goes go from uh, the very low level uh, preprocessing of uh, satellite images to high level uh, processing. Uh, some of them have, uh, I show you. Okay, so uh, now if we want to have a look at uh, what's in inside of a toolbox. It's a kind of uh, multi-layer sandwich, uh, like you can see. At the lower layer, layer we, uh, we have uh, some uh, well-known uh, libraries. After, we have our C++ uh, application public interface, and then uh, the layer of, uh, of toolbox applications. Over that, we have a very efficient uh, image viewer called Monteverdi. Monteverdi okay? So here are some uh, libraries you may know, like GEDAL, like ITKey, and we are built on the shoulders of uh, this uh, giant. And uh, we also have a, a link with uh, QGIS because uh, there is a plugin that allows you to uh, use uh, Offer Toolbox application uh, directly from uh, QGIS, and we'll talk about later. As you may know, uh, Offer Toolbox is a uh, uh, part of uh, OSGEO since uh, three years now, and uh, is licensed under uh, Apache uh, V2 uh, 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 license. Okay, but as I told you at the beginning, the subject of the presentation is not uh, uh, only what is Offer Toolbox, but who are the users of Offer Toolbox? Uh, what are you going to do with Offer Toolbox? How can you use Offer Toolbox? So the whole story is not about the software itself, but about users. Okay, so these are the users of Offer Toolbox. Um, doesn't like, no, I don't recognize anyone. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to uh, have a focus on uh, the, different ways, the different ways you could use Offer Toolbox. Uh, the, a good way to begin to use Offer Toolbox is uh, to launch Monteverdi. Monteverdi is a very efficient uh, image viewer. 
that can uh, uh, that allows you to uh, load very big uh, satellite images, uh, to zoom in, zoom out very efficiently, to apply some uh, some filters like you can uh, see here, to adapt the histogram, to uh, change the channels, and so on. You can also launch applications from uh, Monteverdi. Okay. So the offer of the toolbox applications, as I said, there are about uh, 90 applications. And uh, uh, the main principle is that for every application, we have uh, three different uh, interfaces that, have, uh, that are generated automatically. One uh, application with a graphical interface, one command line interface, and uh, also a Python interface. And we will talk later uh, about the Python interface because it's the main subject of, uh, of this presentation. Okay? So uh, for every application, you have a list of parameters, and the same parameters you will find in uh, every interface with the same name, so it uh, facilitates the use of, uh, of a toolbox. Uh, so now we can also uh, launch uh, application uh, of a toolbox application within QGIS. Uh, from uh, QGIS uh, 3.8, I think it's uh, now uh, uh, an official uh, plugin. It has been an official plugin uh, uh, before, and uh, now it's again uh, an official uh, plugin. And so you can uh, install a, a toolbox plugin from uh, QGIS. Uh, you are just have to install uh, of a toolbox as well on your computer to make it uh, work. And then uh, there is a link between uh, the two uh, the two software, and you can uh, launch uh, of a toolbox application and uh, process your images. You can uh, select, uh, uh, select an image uh, in the stack here and uh, launch, uh, launch an, uh, any application. Okay, so it's quite convenient way to use our photo box when you begin, but uh, to be honest, we still have some problems with this uh, uh, interface, with this plugin, because uh, of uh, some uh, mapping issue between uh, offer toolbox parameters and uh, QGIS parameters in the GUI. Uh, it's a bit complex to resolve, it's a bit more complex to work on, uh, on that subject. So uh, maybe if there are any volunteers, any uh, people uh, that know uh, well uh, QGIS, uh, who have an uh, idea, it could be a good idea to discuss together about how to improve it. Uh, it's not the only way to use our photo blocks, as I said, but uh, I think it could be uh, it could be fine for some people. So if you have uh, any idea, uh, if you have uh, if you know well uh, QGIS, uh, we we are here, and uh, it would be nice to discuss with you. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to speak about remote module. Our remote module module is um is. It's like an, uh, an uh, offer toolbox application, but it's an external offer toolbox application. So it's, it extends the functionalities of uh, the core uh, offer toolbox. Uh, but uh, when you build your uh, remote module, in fact, you can start with, uh, you can git clone a remote module, and uh, we have a template of a remote module, okay? And you can start developing some, uh, uh, some application using offer toolbox filters, using offer toolbox application. You have all the power of uh, offer toolbox. And uh, when you think it's uh, quite mature, and you maybe you want that uh, other users could uh, benefit from your uh, remote module, you can ask us, and we can uh, uh, put a um, daily build uh, chain, for example, to uh, deliver your package throughout our building uh, platform to the other users. So uh, it's uh, very um, it's very convenient. We don't know how many remote modules exist. In fact, we have we know uh, dozens of, uh, of them. We have eight uh, remote modules that we consider as official remote modules that we want to package with uh, our toolbox quite regularly. But uh, there are other remote modules that we don't know because they are uh, not uh, not uh, open source at the moment, or because uh, some maybe some of you have uh, tried to to build an application, and uh, maybe in a few months you will uh, tell, uh, okay, uh, I've done that. Uh, maybe it could be useful to other users of our toolbox, and uh, it became uh, more official. Okay. So uh, now it's time to uh, invite uh, <laughs> Remy to will uh, talk up a little bit about uh, the remote module he, he made, and I wanted him to uh, I wanted him to talk about it from the developer point of view. Uh, not only because it's very interesting, it's remote module, but also because he has a good experience of uh, developing with uh, of a toolbox. Yeah. Thank you, Yannick. Uh, just I uh, would like to add uh, that remote modules are really great if you want to implement a feature that is not already in the offer toolbox uh, 
for instance, some pixel-wise uh, operation, or some, you want to to use some, for instance, TensorFlow, and you you want to keep uh, the uh, a streamable uh, aspect of the, the pipeline uh, because you can use uh, the OTB application like uh, building blocks, you know. You can build big things with uh, small uh, uh, little uh, tools. So remote modules are really uh, useful, I think, when you want to do some custom uh, uh, mid-level uh, stuff. And after that, you can use the high-level uh, API of, uh, of a toolbox like Python or uh, something like that to, to use it. So it's really great. You have many advantages to, to build your own application. So this is uh, one example. Uh, I develop uh, the UTBTF remote module, uh, which is a kind of uh, generic um, uh, fr framework, uh, multi-purpose framework for uh, deep learning on the real-world real uh, image, uh, remote sensing images. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, when you read a scientific paper, uh, people are working on tiny images like uh, postal card stamps, and uh, in the real life, uh, image as images are quite big. Uh, so here you have uh, some SR GAN. Uh, it's a deep uh, net that uh, transforms a low-resolution image into a high-resolution image. So this is some Sentinel-2 image, and this is some Sentinel-2 image, uh, which looks like a Spot-7 image. So. That's just an example. Uh, the uh, image is like, uh, I don't remember, but like an hundred of uh, thousand uh, uh, pixels side. So it's a big image. And you can process it seemly and uh, connect uh, this application with some other application like uh, Bandmat X or if you want to perform some optical calibration before and you can do it uh, by chaining simply the applications. So uh, that's why remote modules are really uh, a great uh, functionality uh, of OTB. And um, yeah, I will let uh, Yanni continue. Uh, he will show you the, how we can uh, change these uh, Lego blocks uh, together with the Python API. Thanks. OK, thank you, Remy. So uh, now we're going to talk about uh, the Python interface uh, to see how our photo box and uh, Python can work together. In fact, the Python interface is at the same level as the application interface. Uh, you cannot um, uh, connect to the, to the lower interface, but uh, it's enough to make a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the API is uh, very, very simple. You have uh, to import a module, uh, you create uh, the application like that, and then you set parameters. That means that you have to know the list of parameters, but uh, OTB applications are quite well documented, so you can uh, uh, type the name of the application on the command line and you get the name of the parameters. And uh, when you know that, you can uh, set the parameters in your Python script and uh, execute uh, your application. Uh, an interesting uh, thing uh, is that uh, OTB applications can be um, linked in a pipeline. That means that uh, if you use the pipeline functionality, uh, the images won't be uh, wrote down uh, on the disk on red. Uh, it, will, it will only be uh, right at the end and uh, read uh, just only at the beginning. It's a very, very interesting uh, characteristic to make some efficient uh, computations because you read on images only once and you write them only at the very end, even if uh, your pipeline has uh, five or ten applications. Okay, So to do that in Python, you just uh, say, OK, execute the applications. And at that time, of the toolbox uh, does nothing. In fact, almost nothing, because it connects the pipelines and uh, it tells uh, the different applications, OK, you will have to uh, take uh, uh, the data from uh, this application, and after the, your next applications will, uh, be, fed, will be fed by uh, this, uh, this results. And at the very end, your last applications, you will, try, you will uh, call uh, execute and write output, and it will uh, write down on the disk the, uh, the final image. Okay? So this is uh, in-memory in -memory connection. Uh, another thing is uh, non-PRA compatibility, so you can uh, also use uh, some uh, images that you have read uh, in uh, non-PRA. Okay. Uh, so to summarize, the three good reasons to use our toolbox in a Python environment. 
uh, uh, that uh, Python is a very popular language, very uh, accessible. Uh, we have this compatibility with NumPy. We have this in-memory connection. And as you may notice, we have put uh, four good reasons, because uh, it's like the swim scooters of uh, Edmond Rostand. They are, in fact, indeed, there are, are four. OK. <laughs> so we think that uh, we have to, to put uh, some effort on the development of, the, on this, on, uh, of uh, this interface and to uh, better integrate with other uh, libraries, other environments, uh, the offer to box, okay? Maybe with uh, XRA or with uh, this kind of uh, of library. So uh, about the integration uh, with other libraries, uh, some of you uh, recognize I've been uh, on Monday on uh, our workshop on uh, our OTB workshop that last uh, half, uh, half a day. It was a short workshop because we have uh, also a big training session of two or three days. But the short workshops is now a kind of a proof, and co proof of concepts, sorry, of uh, Jupyter Notebook plus uh, different libraries like Rastorio, like uh, EP Leaflet to uh, make a smaller processing chain uh, with our toolbox. And it's uh, quite fun, and uh, you can uh, check it uh, on uh, our GitLab. Uh, we also have some ideas of uh, running uh, our toolbox in the cloud, maybe one day, we don't know yet. <laughs> Uh, David here has worked hard to uh, make uh, uh, possible to install Offer Toolbox uh, from uh, Conda, like uh, Conda installed uh, OTB, and uh, it w indeed it worked during the, <laughs> the workshop. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, we will soon uh, also um, try to work on uh, compatibility with uh, libraries like uh, Dask, like Spark, uh, because it's uh, interesting uh, to go on uh, big data frameworks. About OS compatibility, actually it's, uh, it's now compatible with uh, three uh, operating systems, Linux, Windows, also macOS, but uh, macOS we have uh, some, uh, sometimes some difficulties to, to test, and so uh, we ask if we, uh, it's not uh, possible to make a Docker image, an official Docker image, but maybe uh, Docker is not uh, so trendy now, so uh, if you have any suggestion, uh, we are glad to hear your, your ideas. And uh, last thing, uh, what's new in uh, OTB, uh, OTB 7? It will arrive about, uh, I think, in October. And so for the visible part, for the user, uh, there will be some improvements in the graphical interface. Uh, a lot of uh, new uh, thematic um, applications, but uh, one of them uh, will be uh, applications for perspectual features. Uh, a better integration uh, within QGIS, like we said and a simplified documentation because the main entry point will be the cookbook. Uh, before we had a lot of uh, different documents and now you have the cookbook which gives you recipes on uh, how to uh, handle OTB, how to uh, uh, make it work with a lot, uh, in a lot of situations, okay? And uh, on the less visible part of the iceberg, <laughs> a tons of uh, big bug fixes. Uh, we have simplified tests, simplified uh, some uh, compilation process, so uh, for, for developer it will be easier. And we also have a very nice uh, continuous integration uh, within our GitLab instance. So uh, it's uh, very nice because if you are a contributor, you can uh, uh, submit your merge request and it will be uh, compiled on time and uh, you have uh, feedback on uh, if it works, if the test pass, etc. And last but not least, we have a very nice user forum within, uh, with discourse, and it's very efficient. It's a nice way to uh, ask your question and to get uh, feedback from the community. Okay, so thank you again for your feedback. Stay connected. We have uh, here the main uh, entry points to uh, enter the world of, uh, of a toolbox, our website, our GitLab, and uh, uh, the forum. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any question, of course, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, I'm apologize if, I, if I'm missing it and it already exists, but I think it's not. Like, the driver for the data, reading and writing is GDAL, and I really brutally miss PostGIS and virtual rasters. So am I missing it, or is it not still in, yet integrated? Because when we are talking about larger data, we don't want to have one million of TIFFs, and we don't want to have outputs of G, uh, as shapefiles. So I want to have an input virtual raster, an output in PostGIS, then I continue with validating the geometry, doing radiometrical indices with Orphi or stuff like that. So yeah, this is uh, mainly, I think that it's, it's not still existing, and it should be uh, done. Yeah. 
Okay, for the first question, I will uh, always use my uh, my Joker, <laughs> but I think uh, it does not exist yet. Uh, we are going to support uh, GDL3 uh, in the uh, next version, and uh, maybe it could be a good idea to support uh, this uh, virtual raster, but... Uh, uh, ah. Here, another friend that can uh, answer. <laughs> Actually, I've uh, used VRT support in OTB in uh, version 5.0, which is like uh, ages old. So it's there, it works, but uh, in my experience, it was uh, kind of slow. So um, that's. Do you use it like for segmentation or for. Uh, for me, it reads it, but it doesn't work. Maybe that's a good uh, topic for the forum. Thank you. You have uh, other questions? Um, so maybe this is also answered by, by the cheated answer. So how do you how do you interact with with cloud data? So like like uh, Amazon S3, or is this possible, or is this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we 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 don't know uh, we don't uh, interact yet with uh, this kind of uh, this kind of data. We only uh, uh, open uh, lo local files for the moment. But uh, maybe in uh, future works we we would like to uh, interact with such uh, such data. Uh, don't want to use any idea. He's uh, also a contributor from uh, OTB. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, Amazon S3 should be supported via GDAL, but it I think it doesn't really work too well right now. Uh, but we use the um, uh, a fuse driver to mount uh, S3 like file systems to as local drives, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, usually pretty a pretty good solution. Okay, one maybe one last question. Just a, just a short question. Do you plan to like expand the uh, SAR processing module a bit because now it's kind of like limited, I think, just to calibration or something? And so that's a question. Uh. Um, I don't know if we are going to extend it now, but there are a lot of users uh, at NAS using uh, SAR data, and uh, there are s uh, some of them are building some remote modules uh, with SAR, for example, to uh, to filter speckle with a, a higher, uh, longer time series. So we can use uh, SAR data to make a lot of things like classification and so on, but uh, not uh, now in um, off toolbox uh, on core for toolbox. Even if uh, there are some uh, SAR data processing in off toolbox. Yeah, like more like, uh, some yeah. Yeah, I think you you have to. You have to have a look at uh, um, remote module uh, called uh, Diapo TB. Uh, which is a uh, uh, remote really to make infer interferometry to make uh, some uh, filtering on uh, SAR data. So uh, uh, definitely, you should have a look at that. It's developed now, and uh, I think it will be. Uh, qu yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There is also the S one tiling uh, remote module, which allows you to. Um, uh, to map uh, S1 data on uh, Sentinel-2 uh, tiles, uh, to make the auto-rectification and so on, and to make some uh, treatments, some filtering. So it's uh, definitely a good idea also to, to use uh, S1 tiling if you want to use a Sentinel-1 data along with uh, Sentinel uh, optical uh, data uh, from Sentinel-2. Hmm. I guess we have to stop now. Thank you very much, and uh, see you later. <laughs>